<laughs> welcome, welcome. My name is Armando from Bomberos on Fire podcast. Uh, I got a really special guest with me today from people that I listen to around the world because uh, I find out I have people from Morocco, Spain, uh, Poland, uh, South America, and here in the United States. I'm here with somebody who's an uh, expert subject matter on a lot of things that I'm curious about asking questions and uh, figure it out to you. And I'm pretty sure you're probably curious too about what I do too. Why not? Um, That's right. Haley, <laughs> thank you for giving me your time. I know your time is valuable. I appreciate it a lot. If you can introduce yourself and uh, we start from there. Well, thank you so much for having me on your show. So hi, everyone. My name is Haley Marguerite, and I am the founder of Haley Marguerite Enterprises. I'm a children's author, and I'm also the founder of Haley Marguerite Publishing. And I have designed and created a whole plethora of anti-bullying yes. programs called our Unity STEM programs. And I'm also a realtor. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I wear many hats. <laughs> I know. I feel you. And actually, I, I just... just recently, I. Uh, that's right. And actually, just recently, I teach uh, English to Spanish uh, students. I have one student right now. We got a second student, so I do a lot. Really? <laughs> oh well, congrats! <laughs> I do. Yeah. That's that's pretty Thank cool. You. Actually, I took four years of Spanish. Thank you. Yeah, two in high school, two in college, and uh, it was the cleaners here in. Uh, at the office, Heather, my assistant, and I were working really late doing my YouTube show, which is the Haley Marguerite show. And they, oh. we were like here until 1030 at night. And they came in. I was speaking the little Spanish I know. Um, but I know enough to get by. And so the husband said, can you teach my wife English? And I said, I don't really have the time. He's like, please, please. We t uh, cook really good Colombian food. I was like, okay, so I love Colombian food. <laughs> Yeah, wait, hold a second. So, yeah. Some paella parse, some arepa, right, some, hold uh, the line. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's so cool. I didn't know that. That's <laughs> awesome. Exactly. Yeah, uh, as you, yes. as Thank people you. can notice, I do have an accent, but I speak three languages. I go from Spanish, English, and Portuguese. My Portuguese is kind of rusty, but uh, wow, I'll get better eventually at some point. <laughs> and I'm uh, learning Polish for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, from my recent trip in Poland. But anyway. I no, I couldn't hear your accent. No, at all. Hey, it could be. Well, it's not that thick. It's just, uh, like I said, somebody told me it's a sexy accent for working a, f a first responder. They say, oh, where are you from? They always tell me that question. Where are you it from? Does. It does. It sounds like that. Yeah. Yeah, I can roll my arms, which is great. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thank you so much for being here. And now. Uh, the anti-bullying things that, I, that you tell me and that you created, that's awesome. And uh, for those people that don't know, because, you. you know, that's an uh, old school mentality that bullying doesn't exist. You have mm -hmm. to suck it up and move on, right? You probably had that. And I had it, especially mm -hmm. growing up in South America. Bullying is not even a word on a dictionary. <laughs> so um, what motivate you to create that? What, what caused that motivation, which is great? Thank you. So a few different things. Um, well. I myself was not a really popular kid growing up. I actually, believe it or not, I was a kid that everyone would bully. I got oh, made fun okay. of from How? elementary all the way to high school. And middle school, I would eat my lunch on the toilet seat of the bathroom every single day. And it was traumatizing. It was really, really bad. Well, lo and behold, about 2022, 2021 time frame, Mm. During COVID, I had a book stand, like a table. I was just peddling my books, trying to get the word out there about the Charlie Take Center book series. Well, yes. lo and behold, I run into an older gentleman who it just so happens he's the founder of Kettle One Vodka. And um, we end up going to dinner that night and he tells me how he really is interested in my programs and he wants to work with me to really make a difference in these kids' lives. And I said, well, that's interesting. What do you propose? So we ended up for the next two years working really, really close together. And he tell, told me over dinner that night how he... Uh, co-owned with another gentleman, an aerospace testing company, third party. And so Nats owed my friend a uh, favor. And it's not something I'm sure you hear every day. And no. so I had this epiphany. 
I had dinner and I said, oh my gosh, what if we were to reach out to Nat and see how much it would cost just kind of, you know, just I'm just throwing it out there, you know, let's see how much it costs to, like, okay, where are you going with this? And I knew that space was the hottest trending topic on social media. Kids and adults really like space. And yeah. so we ended up getting um, that granted. And so I would go around to these farmer's markets, these art shows, and anytime people would purchase the books or in large quantities, or we had these programs at the end, or if they just purchase one book, they would be able to take a selfie and they would have that photo go to the moon. Well, within a matter of 30 seconds to a minute, they would get their photo on the moon and they would get a certificate that they can print out, download, and then go to the dollar store and uh, frame it. So everything was kind of framed around the moon so that kids can understand there's a higher purpose, higher meaning. We're all kind of connected together. It doesn't matter what your background is, the color of your skin, your sexual orientation, your political views. We're all together and we all are one. Which is so true. That's kind of how it all That is together. awesome. That is yeah. a genius idea, to be honest. I never Thank thought about you. it. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's awesome. Thank that's, you. Uh, uh, do you still have that? Uh, so I can take a picture for my kids on the sent to the moon because <laughs> I, I will do it a hundred percent. That's so pretty cool. We, thank you. We just shut down the, uh, site because it was the end of that rocket, but we yeah. are getting another link to go up. So it should be in the next maybe month or so. Um, once I get the information from uh, Dave, David Vanderbilt, he's going to send it to me and then I'm going to send it out to everyone. So you'll definitely be getting the link. Perfect. Absolutely. And, uh, we're trying to get as many people as possible to go with the moon. Yeah. Yeah, that would be awesome. And uh, any information that you have, and for those who are listening at the moment or seeing the video on YouTube, I'll put your contact information if I need to talk to you or, or get ahead of, or get contact with the books or anything like that. I'll put it in the description. So uh, I will definitely get a get that link or get that information and put it because it's important to to do like things that i can change the community uh sometimes you think you don't do nothing absolutely but little 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 things can actually make a big change maybe you won't see it at the moment but it, mm -hmm. it will happen and uh li like like the podcast i had talk about mental health about suicide and firefighters or military cops and uh mm. got a friend of mine that his his mom died and her mom last, I guess, wish and happiness was that she saw her son on the podcast. And and that really Aww. like paid off everything that I've done so far. Because I don't I don't do this for money. I do mm. it for the put the information out there and maybe hopefully somebody listen to this and make a change. So I that's love the that. point that's that really I have. beautiful. That's amazing. Yeah, thank you. And and it's I, like I said, I was in That's Poland, great. and I was like a three hours from Russia, talking to a bunch of firemen over there. And as uh, they really mental, they talk they're really big in cancer prevention, huge on it. But mental health, bullying, wow. motivation, they don't care that much, which I was surprised. Interesting. Yeah. So maybe hmm. you can extend your uh, wow. power of knowledge to outside the U.S. and maybe make a change outside too, eventually. So, yeah, no, um, absolutely. That is definitely our our business plan. Um, we're trying to do a whole global reach so we can attract as many people as possible. Oh, mm -hmm. definitely. With this podcast, hopefully, it get reached somewhere. At, at least somebody speaks Spanish. <laughs> um, <laughs> absolutely, yes, that's yes. a big deal. So, and and uh, having that traumatic experience, uh, being bullied in, in school. And then how do you come up with that anti-bullying campaign? How do you, how do you say, you know what, enough is enough. I want to save, at least help kids. And you're not just kids, adults too, because we get bullied too. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be honest, in some parts. Sure. Sure. Well, you know, a lot of people, you know, go through mental health, that stigma. And I think it was COVID that really sparked the idea of coming up with programs because kids are home, they're bored out of their mind, they don't know what to do, they don't want mom or dad being the teacher. So you have a lot of time in your hands to come up with some different ideas. So I came up with a whole 
slew of programs. So I remembered when I was getting bullied and I just was trying to put my head together when, you know, you're getting bullied. What are some things that we can teach kids to maybe use their words instead of violence, instead of pushing the kid, instead of fighting back? Because I don't have kids, but I have a lot of friends that have kids and they'll always tell me that I told my son or I told my daughter that if this kid touches that kid, that you better be the first one to fight them and you better finish it. And I'm like, you're not really like telling your kid to do the right thing. You know, why don't you tell your child to use her words or learn a different skill to become more empowered, to become resilient? You know, what happened to the term, the words or the phrase, sticks and stones can hurt my bones, but names, you know, can never harm me. So yeah. I think we've just as a whole become a very weak society and yes. it's just really sad. I think it's definitely the media has uh, played a huge role in this. I think it's maybe um teachers i think it's a lot of different factors so i think together as a community by implementing really great programs we can have hopefully one day a a stronger society that kids you know can use the programs to just do the right thing and know how to be more connected rather than maybe in their phone because sometimes these video games are teaching kids just not the right things or the bad language and kids think it's okay to tell their teacher to f off or just not be nice to a cop or just not show respect and kids don't notice but that's a form of bullying it is it is yeah it is and it's true what you said about we became weaker in general Uh, as a society we Mm -hmm. we have that weakness now and People can exploit it, mm-hmm. like insta- the social media exploit your weakness. 100%. That's that's what it that's what it does. Yeah. I mean. And uh, what what tip will you give to those parents? Because I also think that it's also parenting. It's not just the kid. Is I think the mm-hmm. parents also have to be involved and uh, be strong themselves to guide the kid to the right path. What do you recommend to those parents right now? They're suffering from their kid being bullied by whatever, but what are one of the tips or one of the things that you, you can do as a parent? Sure. Well, what a great question because I actually was asked this exact same question <laughs> when I was asked to come to a anti-bullying rally over in the Glades area. So it's in Palm Beach County where yeah. it's a big minority community and they had a huge episode where a young girl she was i think 14 or 15 years old she took her own life she hung herself and i said we need to do better as a community what does that mean you need to be more connected with your kids you need to ask where your child is going after school who are your children's friends if your child says it's none of your business it is your business you are the parent they're living in your house they're under 18 you're paying the bills that is your business i think wholeheartedly if you're paying for their cell phone bill you should be getting a copy on every single text or every single app that they download it comes down to parenting because i would want to know if i have kids what they're snapping to their friends these are really dangerous apps and if we're not aware of what they're downloading they can get into some serious stuff down the road that is true just be more aware don't be a friend with your kids but just be aware yeah, like I told uh, my kids, uh, I'm not your best friend, I'm your dad. So you like it or not, that's that's the reality. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but but I also, you. yeah, I also mm-hmm. came from South America, which is really rough growing up. And I came from Venezuela, mm-hmm. the capital city, Caracas. So, okay. uh, yeah, growing yep. up is a little yep. bit different from, from here, as you probably see on TV and all that. And, mm-hmm. uh, and now I've been in this country yeah. 16, 17 years. Uh, and I'm a citizen too, so I'm a, I'm a, I always have, I was, I was born you. in Venezuela, well, but I was, yeah. I was made in the United States. Mm-hmm. So I, this is, regardless of what happened, this yeah. is the best country in the world. I, I have to admit it. it. It's true. Amen. Yeah. That's Amen. why we're all here. That's why people come it's here and true. die to come here. And, and we see it in Florida. Mm-hmm. We see it all the time. And, uh, that's pretty good. And, mm-hmm. um, for those parents, what, what do you because so, some parents don't know what to do or they don't or have the ignorance not in a bad way it's just they don't know the information or maybe they don't have the emotional intelligence to say hey i'm the dad you're the kid what they can do or where they can mm. find information to 
to I don't say to be a parent, but at least to guide them to be a better parent or mm-hmm. where you can find that as a parent. Maybe you know? Sure. I mean I mean I think the best thing is to just honestly, no one knows your child been better than you know your child. Rather than trying to pawn your child off to, you know, your friend um, who has kids, really just try to get more in tune with your child. You know, if you don't have a good relationship, we'll try. It starts with you. You know, if your child is slamming the doors at home, if your child says, I don't want to talk to you, don't be okay with an answer. Ask why. You know, if they're 12 years old, you have to understand they're 12 years old. A 12 year old is going to act like a 12 year old. Yeah. So don't take that to heart and just ask them, well, what's going on in your life? Did you have a bad, you know, day? Why did you have a bad day? You know, and how you can kind of have them open up take interest in their and what they like. Maybe you might not like fishing. Maybe you might not like pottery, but take interest in it. Because when you start to take interest in something your child likes, that's when they will blossom and share something that's going on in their life. That's the only way. So I'm a big proponent of, of therapy, but I think that you should really try and work on your relationship with your child first before all these other external factors. And then your child will realize that, oh my gosh, they're really trying. Because there's so many things that kids will try drugs and alcohol and sex. And I think that if the parent is plugged in and they are asking the right questions and they're acting like they're caring rather than saying, I'm so sorry, I'm tired, or I don't have time. The child will think, will take that as you don't have time for me. You don't like me. You're upset with me when that's not what they're saying. Yeah. So, so like, it's miscommunicated the wrong way. Mm-hmm. God, it's like having like a, a shield that, yeah, you don't care about me. It's just, it's asking mm-hmm. for help. It's, it's like the same way right. I deal with suicide that's patients. Right. It's the, yeah, it makes sense. And, and, uh, is this um, right? Right. I, yeah, go for it. Because even when, if you ask your child, "How are you doing today?" Oh, I'm fine, or "Oh, I'm okay." No one is fine when they say "I'm fine." It means like, "Oh, I'm I'm a burden. It's okay. Don't worry about me." But what they're really saying is, "Please ask me. Please um, pay attention to me." They just want someone to kind of sit with them. Maybe they want to sit with you and color. And like I said before, if you don't like doing that, pretend, you know, it's your child. Yeah. So I think, you know, I think there's so many parents who maybe have lost a child due to suicide. Someone like, I think you said you got a call for that. And so many parents probably looking back would say in hindsight, oh my gosh, if I had just one more last moment with them, I would have done it differently. And that's what I'm saying. Just be intentional with your kids. Yeah. And, Make time. And we try, that's good. And we try to avoid to get to that point. So oh, I miss my child now. So we mm-hmm. actually doing like a preventive yeah. job of getting to that point. Which mm-hmm. we want to avoid and mm-hmm. if true. the tactics change if the your kid is the one bullying everybody else or is the same like i know communication is a big thing but if let's say my kid is the one bullying people how do you deal with that sure so if my child is the one bullying you know i would want to really sit down with my child the teacher maybe if there's other people involved maybe the other child or the other child's parent if it's the first time it's happening i think i want to get more details but if it's situation after situation after situation and i keep hearing that my child is a common denominator well (laughs) i mean it kind of looks to say that (laughs) your child is you know the problem and I kind of want to know why they're acting a certain way because no one goes and pushes someone for no reason. No one will call someone an idiot or I hate you just because they're going to hear it from their parents. Maybe the parents are yelling and cursing at one another. Maybe they're not getting uh, attention at home. There's other reasons because kids are young. They have a very innocent mind and they're not going to just for no reason come to school and say, you know, tell someone off. It, it, 
something's yeah. not right there. No right. So you it's have true. to, I think. I think as a parent, if you hear that your child consistently is getting bullied or your child consistently is a bully, you need to stop what you're doing, take off of work that day, and go have lunch with your child. Okay. Don't yeah. get mad at your child and say, you're in, you're in trouble, uh, you're grounded, because now it's going to keep having your child do the same things at school. Yeah. And it's true. Um, so basically mm -hmm. comes down to communication mm -hmm. and build that bridge between you and your child mm -hmm. to to make sure that mm -hmm. you're on the same page. But how about right. those those kids that are about to be adults? You know, the, the 16, 17, and 17 and a half. How do you deal with that and bullying? Mm -hmm. that's, that's a rough one. You're saying if my child is 16 or 17 yeah. or almost 18 and they're the bully. Yeah. They're, they're being bullied or they are the is that bully. What you're saying? If, if yes. they are the bully. Yes. Okay. I, I would do it the same way. I mean, I think every situation is different. And so if it's, if it's something that, for instance, if my child, I had a friend who was, I can use this as an example. If I had a child that, you know, they're sending suggestive photos, maybe on Snapchat, and it's a boy, and he's sending about a girl suggestive photos. I would tell him, "Look, you have one one warning. This is your warning. You better delete all those photos right now, because if you don't, I don't care if you're my child, but I will be bringing you to the, the police station because that is not okay. That is a felony. You cannot do that. You have to understand your kid that there is consequences in life." And for your actions, there are repercussions. Yeah, so that's the real world, and I think I would tell it to my child because yeah. if not, it's going to be a real hard awakening in life. Yes, so. or maybe too late. That's how uh, I would I would tell them. Yeah, no, that's good. Mm -hmm. it, it's true. I mean, sometimes it's tough love. You have to yeah. just uh, be yeah. straightforward, especially at that age when it's you know the seventeen, the sixteen. They don't care about authority. The the wild kid. I want to do whatever I want. I'm almost 18, so yeah. At that point, you need right. to be straightforward. Mm -hmm. um, Correct. And I don't think I would be upset with my child for being on being on those sites, or I would be upset for like for sending photos. But of course kids at certain age don't know and your job as a parent is to step in to protect them of course i'm not going to get upset if i have a son and he thinks that another woman is hot and sexy i think that's normal every young boy is going to think that but you as a parent are there to step in and say no 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 that's not appropriate you're young you know you're not 18 this is not this is not appropriate material for a young mind to be looking at I think so there's different ways to kind of frame it for that individual. That makes sense. Yeah. So it's, it's uh, sometimes it's not the content it's how you say it. Kind of right. Absolutely. hundred percent. I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> uh, especially with that adolescents. They're, uh, <laughs> they're touchy sometimes. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I, and That's I, and right. I seen it That's when right. they, uh, and I'm sure they, you've uh, experienced a lot, especially in your field too. Oh my God! It's all every day, all day. The seventeens, the eighteens, the nineteens, all the teens people. I, I, all day long, they call and they, they see the fire truck or they see the ambulance and they're freaking out. And I call because I'm anxious. It's, hey, that's still a call, man. It's still nine one one. And uh, like we are not trained on psychology, but we know a little bit on it. It's just enough to keep you stable, so I can take you mm. to the specialist. That's our job. So. Uh, Sometimes they get right. a hand, especially um, New Year's Eve, a lot of uh, domestic violence. I had a lot of cases, which is weird. Mm. That's awful. It is awful. But uh, like you said, I think communication really is, the, is, is the base of everything. Is lacking of communication make the Christmas or the New Year's Eve uh, wow. different. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. right. And uh, talking about something else a little more... Uh, cheerful about your books tell me about your books because uh i have a chance to actually i think i ordered one on amazon uh the one in new york like, yeah yeah it's, it's awesome because okay. i want to go to new york with my kids so they're crazy about it so hey, this is perfect 
Oh. So tell me about your books. What is about, what is uh, everything about it? So I am the author, as I mentioned earlier, of the Charlie Takes an Adventure book series. So it's a really interesting story, should I say, because I started when I was just 11 years old in the sixth grade, part of a class project with the first book, Charlie Takes an Adventure. And about 13 years later, I then published the book at age 24. I wanted to get the books published or that one book published for years and years and years. But I constantly would hear the discouragement from family, friends, teachers, librarians. And what I would hear was, you're way too young, too hard, too much money. But it didn't really stop there until about the time I wanted to publish it at age 24. When a boyfriend says, you'll never get that book published. You're just not smart enough. So oh. that's when I said, you know, the hell with you. Oh, for sure. <laughs> so I ended up getting the book published. And, um, yeah, I got the book published. And it was hit with a very overwhelmingly positive response. Parents, educators, teachers really just love the Penguin Charlie. So then I published a second book. And that was Charlie Takes Adventure to Massachusetts. And I published another one, Charlie Takes Adventure to New York, which is the one that you said you purchased. Then I purchased, then I published a fourth one, Charlie Takes Adventure to the Moon. So I did it in a series of three. So we have all three, you know, the first ones. And then I have the next one coming out. It's in the works, Charlie Takes Adventure to Mars. So all is space related. They do tie in with the space uh, shuttles. Oh, nice. And, uh, yeah, and then we might do a Saturn one after that. Yeah. Oh, so a lot wow. of people who like Elon Musk and, you know, follow all of that. <laughs> yes, you keep it up with SpaceX. Charlie goes with SpaceX to the moon, to Mars. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, so, that's awesome. And, yeah, if anyone wants the books and if you want it autographed, you can go on the website to www. Nice. And uh, I'll put that website uh, link on the prescription so people can see it, can link on it. Hopefully, take a look and uh, uh, pick your choice. If you want to go to Mars, you want to go to the moon or uh, just to uh, New York, <laughs> just pick one. They're great. That's right. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Hey, thanks. No, you're welcome. It, it's true. I mean, you have to support each other because other than that, I mean, uh, we are, I, I see myself as a community. Uh, and we need to help each other mm -hmm. regardless where we are now with the social media and the all the access that we have internet wise uh, we can be any part of the world and still be a small community it's just a matter of support each other that's right have you ever thought about mm -hmm. doing a creating your own podcast because you'll be good at it oh thank you hey i appreciate yeah. that yes people have mentioned to me I think it was during COVID. I never really went forward with it. But just recently, I started my, uh, what do you call it, YouTube show. Okay. So I have a small number of videos on there, very low number of subscribers, maybe like 30 or 40. I literally yeah. just started. So my goal is to put about two out a week, and eventually we're going to get up to three a week. So, yeah, it's good. But I, awesome. I definitely at some point want to do a podcast channel. That's exactly. awesome. Well, if you need information, uh, I'm not Joe Rogan, obviously, but I can help you to whatever you need. <laughs> <laughs> one point, one one okay. time, I will get to hey, Joe Rogan I level. Appreciate but that. Yeah, um, yeah, it'll be great. And oh, uh, about I love the YouTube, him. he's great. Yeah, yeah, about the YouTube channel is I'm in the same boat. I don't have a thousand, yeah. a million people, or thirty thousand billion like uh, Mr. Beast, yeah. for example. But it's uh, I guess discipline oh, uh, yeah. and uh, yeah. it's, it's discipline and. Uh, be constant in everything that you do. So um, that's and I think right. You're good at it too. That's right. Uh, publishing books is not. Thank you. And the more you keep doing it, and the more consistent, I know uh, your following will just keep growing. Because I met someone. She told me it was like at a art show where I was selling my book. Within the last maybe month or so, she had like ten subscribers. This is like a year ago, and now she has thirty five hundred or four thousand. So she said, just oh, keep wow. doing it, and doing it, and doing it. So. It worked. I it know. Worked. So I was like, that's oh, awesome. okay, that's motivating. Thanks. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it takes time, but it works. That's awesome. And uh Right. Uh, yeah. Uh what do you what do you besides being a uh, author and besides having a campaign about anti bullying, what else you do? I know you're a realtor. 
and a motivation speaker, right? I'm a realtor with Keller. I am. And then I also own a publishing company as well. So anyone that oh. has an idea, which I feel everyone does. And everyone always says, oh my gosh, I want to publish a book. I don't know how. So I have a business that will help you. Sweet. And, and what is, how does that process go? How do you publish a book? I'm, now, now this is my curiosity. It's a personal curiosity. <laughs> okay. So it's an indie publisher, which is, I guess, the same word or interchangeable word for independent publisher. So it's a full service. So we also have options. It's a la carte. So if you want marketing, we can help with that. But we also help people that first time authors, we usually specialize more with first time authors, a lot of hand holding. It, it's nice because we have a pretty small company. And we're just shy of two years. And so people will have my cell phone number, they have my email address, they can text me, call me whenever. And it's nice because I will let them know every step of the way. And I actually will show them why, you know, it's taking this long or, you know, what this means or what that means and the pixelation or the resolution levels. Whereas when I was with a publishing company, um, I never got that sort of hand holding that I wanted. I really wanted to learn the business. So we try and teach the authors as much as they want it. Now we're not going to throw, you know, all this information on if they just aren't interested and don't want to know. But, um, I do have connections to a local, uh, show news channel down here. So if people get the books published with me, they're able to, um, have that option if they want to have their books with Ingram spark or Amazon or Barnes Noble online, or they want to have their books, audiobook version or oh. a ebook. We do have that option too. If they say, Hey, I have an idea, but I'm just really awful at writing. We have people to help to write the book. So we would call that a ghost writer. So they would pay a certain price or a fee. Yeah, yeah. And um, they they would put their name on the book, so not the person who writes the book. So they would still get 100% credit for it. So it's yeah, yeah. pretty neat, and it's totally legal. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's, that's the first that's... thing people ask me. Is that allowed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I don't have to write a book. I would love to write a book, but I don't know how. And my grammar in English is horrible. Right. Yeah, I get all confused See? between and Spanish grammar and English. Has, yeah. <laughs> that's right yeah yeah and we even have a great editor we have um a great person who will help with graphic design and illustration and then we have a few other people who will work with illustrating but we do have one gal that we use pretty much for a lot of the books for illustrating because we just love her she's great she does great work the clients love her so nice Good. that's that's awesome Wow, that's that's yeah. very interesting. To be honest, I didn't thought about it because you know Thank uh, you. I didn't have to encounter that feel. Um, but I, I got a question. Uh, mm -hmm. Since you're in Florida and Go for it. Hispanic, yeah, Hispanic okay. culture is big. Do you have any of your books in Spanish? Yeah. I don't. That is something that a lot of people have asked. I haven't went forward to make it into a book. Um, I might do that pretty soon um, as we're running pretty low on uh, some of the titles. So that might be a good idea. Um, one of my close friends, she's actually Hispanic. So she actually mentioned to me that she was going to put all four of my books into Spanish. So that would be great because um, one of my books actually got picked up by a top 10 best aquarium in Miami. And they had mentioned to me, it's called Miami's Aquarium. That they think that we would get um, more people that would buy the books if the book was actually made into Spanish. So I thought that was kind of interesting, which I mean makes sense because we do have a lot of Hispanic people down here too, like you said. Oh yeah, especially you're yeah. in. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, especially uh, you live in Miami or it's in. Uh, where are you located in Florida? Just the general area. Pretty Pretty close. So I'm an hour north of Miami, but of course, like all depends on the traffic with Miami. So sometimes you get them in 30 minutes, sometimes an hour and a half. So. Oh my God. Yes, I know. Yeah. Miami is horrible driving. I I try to avoid Miami mm. to drive inside as much as I can. Oh my God. Yeah. But uh, I'm in Orlando area. So I have to take now the That's new right. uh, Bright train or the new train the system that we have, which is like three I've hours. I've never been on it. Oh, you should. Girl, yeah, that's Yeah, I want to awesome. ride that. I hear it's amazing. Really? Yes. 
you got Wi-Fi, you got you can get lunch, and it's almost almost twenty four hours, wow. almost. But it works up to, up to late, like eleven p.m. or twelve p.m. twelve in the morning. Uh, it wow. is it will save you a lot of money on gas, and it's convenience. Most anything is convenience. Wow, and it's pretty inexpensive, isn't it? It's pretty cheap. It's like yes, something crazy, if, like twenty five dollars yeah. or something. Well, I think it's eighty something. Wow. But um, okay. if you have a meeting in Orlando or I have a meeting in Miami, I just take the train for one day. It's perfect for commuting one day. Or do That's a good idea. Yeah. Wow. You just station. actually got me thinking because I, I actually, I'll be in your neck of the woods. It's on a Sunday. Have you heard of Full Sail University? Well, I'm sure oh, yeah. it's not far I from know. you. Trust me, I know. I, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. I met. Oh, so I met with this uh, TV movie producer. So they're interested to make the four of my books into a cartoon. And oh, so we're sweet. driving up. We're, we're taking two different cars. So actually, that's a good idea. I might actually look into that to see if it's possible, and then maybe I can, I guess, get an Uber. I don't know how far. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, yeah. From the to the, place. the the only stop I think right now is uh, the airport. But they're planning to open one in Disney okay. and another one somewhere in between Orlando. But an Uber from the airport to full sale is not that bad. It's probably 15 to 20 bucks at the most oh. round trip. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it's just the traffic sucks. So that could be good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So that could be good. I'll have to look into that. Yeah. yeah. Everyone says it's amazing and it's so clean. The service is great. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and, and I'm happy we're having that service now wow. in Florida. It's so, uh, I'm so happy about it. So relief because uh, I had a chance to travel mm-hmm. outside the U.S., yeah. especially in the Europe, and everything is strained. Have you? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I've been in Portugal, Spain, uh, uh, England, Poland. I'm going back to Poland, actually, in March to be a judge mm-hmm. of the firefighter competitions over there. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I – well – Behind mm. me, there's a flag. It says uh, Fires Group. That's my company. I teach firefighters how to save our own mm-hmm. life. If you are in, a, uh, in an incident that you get trapped or get injured, how to you save yourself or how you save another fireman. Because it's completely different ways wow. a normal citizen than a fireman. So I, but I teach it outside the U.S. And uh, I had a chance to go to Poland. I got plans to go That's to Poland, Chile, and Mexico. Right. And... Uh, yeah, it is interesting. It's a uh, it's a different complete ball game. It's uh it's fun. <laughs> it's a hard work fun. And uh, yeah, in wow. Europe, Poland, everything is no trained. Kidding. Everything is uh uh they don't use. I mean, you don't need a car, basically. Hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay. Wow. So when are you going to this trip to Poland? Uh, said? well, by the time we publish this episode, I should be gone. It will be mm-hmm. February twenty ninth. So. By that week, probably, okay. or maybe this episode will oh, okay. be out after a week after. But I'm going to the capital city. I'm going to the Far University in Warsaw, Poland, and uh, yeah, it will be cold. Wow, really cold. <laughs> it will be fun. Yeah. Oh wow, that'll be great. So, how cold are we talking? Like in the twenties? Uh, twenties Fahrenheit. No, I think it's ten Fahrenheit, which is minus. Don't get me wrong, because uh, it's been a while since I used those uh, units, but I think it's minus one Celsius. Mm-hmm. It, it, it oh. will be, oh, oh yeah, it will be snowing and cold. It's and cold. Uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah, and I'm not, I'm a, I'm a South American yeah. boy. I'm a Florida boy now, so I'm used to the heat and the one day of, of <laughs> cold weather here. I can't deal with that. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, funny things in, in Poland, uh, their culture, they drink a lot of alcohol just to keep themselves warm. So it's a lot of vodka involved <laughs> on when you go to Poland. <laughs> okay. That's right. I never been, but when my grandmother went, she said they would have vodka with their uh breakfast, they would have it after, they would have it for lunch, with dinner. So when oh she God. came back, she brought me like this big bottle of vodka. <laughs> oh so. yeah, it is it is and yeah. I, w- I was drinking yeah. vodka at nine o'clock in the morning. Intense. Like for them yeah. it's nothing, but I'm like, bro, I, this oh is too much. Goodness. <laughs> this <Party>. I can't. <laughs> yeah, That's for them it's normal. For them it's like drinking oh coffee. Oh my goodness! And I, I can't, I can't do oh this my. in the morning. Yeah, that's what she said. Yeah. Yeah, with orange juice. Wow. Vodka, orange juice, and they're uh, <laughs> they eat something like raw meat. Wow. 
tatar, which is uh, it tastes amazing, but it's raw meat with cilantro and uh, onion. Oh, that's different. Yeah, it oh, is okay. amazing, but it's different. just different. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm used. I'm used to that wow. type of. I don't of, know if uh, I would agree with my stomach. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, yeah. Have to try. I mean, um, I spent time in the jungle one time, yeah. like six months, and I ate like uh, snakes and uh, monkeys and roaches. Wow. And, yeah, you get Goodness used to it gracious. at some point. Wow, you're brave. Yeah, yeah it's just curious. That's all. <laughs> I got a curious mind. So, <laughs> I got a question too. Uh, so you went from Go book author. Anti bullying uh, promoter, uh, motivation speaker mm -hmm. to uh, real estate agent. How that you you got a lot of hats more than me, probably. That's right. That's a lot. <laughs> How that happen? <laughs> yeah. How did it happen? Well, so, you know, I was doing so COVID comes and everything is shut down. COVID was like May in Florida, you know, everything's kind of re back open. And I said to myself, well, I can't go to the farmer's markets. I can't give uh, talks at schools. I yeah. can't go to art shows, like everywhere. And even the states that were open, it just, they might have been in Alabama or Mississippi. And I'm like, well, that's the drive. That kind of stinks. And so I said to myself, well, I can try and see about taking the real estate exam. And there were so many people against me. They were like, what are you doing? Oh my gosh, you're going to get rid of your whole like public figure status. It's like so bizarre. Oh my gosh, who does that? Like people thought I was like having like a breakdown, like a mental crisis. <laughs> I was like, no, I want to see if I can do something. Yeah. But everyone was telling me, well, it's really tough because you don't know math, the chances of you passing it on the first time. Good luck. You might have to pat you might have to take it five to seven times. So I didn't let that deter me, you know. Um, I would have my pumpkin spice lattes uh in the evening starting at uh seven PM. I got done studying at three or four in the morning. I hired a tutor, no joke, for I think four days a week for five hours a day. I was very determined. I was not taking this more than once. And I passed the first time. And nice. when I took the state exam, um, they don't give you like a number, but I, I got probably in the 95th to 98th percentile. Almost probably wow. I got everything right. Congrats. So I, and it's interesting. Thank you. I think it goes back to set to, you know, if you really want something and you go after it, I think the mind is so powerful. We often tell ourselves, oh, it's Monday. Oh, I'm tired. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, that never will happen. You know, but if you tell yourself, I'm smart, I can do this. The brain is so powerful. The brain will do everything in its power and its capacity to make it happen. And I mean, I saw that happen. And I think with my faith in God, it was even more than possible. Yeah, uh, sometimes take a little bit extra magic <laughs> from outside this realm to uh, help right. you to yeah. get motivated. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, yeah, and regardless what do you mm -hmm. believe, because you know there's a uh, multiple religions and all that. People need that. I think to me, mm -hmm. you need to have that extra. Yeah. Uh, like I said uh, belief. So some people need it, yeah. some people don't. But uh, whoever needs it is That's great. Right. Is it helps? Sometimes helps a lot, mm -hmm. actually. <laughs> mm -hmm. Especially now That's we're going right, through so much, so much, so much crap right now going on in the world that everything going on. Uh, yeah. I think we need more guidance and more, more people like you trying to open communication channels Thank and, uh, and uh, trying to do the anti-bullying, trying to help people to get motivated. Um, uh, yeah, I think people Thank have too you. much time in their hands and uh, people like you or people like in, in this group of people um, helps. Even it's a little bit, it helps a lot. Well, thank you. Hey, that really means a lot to me. So thank you. And I definitely do agree with what you said, you know, eat in this world that it's kind of uh, the way it is. I think it doesn't matter what we believe in. I think we're all kind of connected together. And I think as long as you believe in something, you know, I think that we can kind of all come together. So yeah, and it's true. And well, it doesn't matter where you're from. With that. Yeah. Exactly, and and doesn't matter. 
It doesn't matter. And uh, as a motivational speaker, what would be the, like, give me two mm -hmm. tips for people to are right now stuck, are right now in the, in the couch watching TV, like, I don't know what to do with my life. What do you recommend mm. uh, to keep moving, regardless of the age? Sure. So there's a couple of things. Um, don't try and change your whole life overnight. We often will say, oh my gosh, I'm so fat. I need to lose weight. I don't like the job I have. I need to move out. I need to get a boyfriend. Like people will make this whole list become so overwhelmed. So what you can do is put that on a paper, you know, put a list out of things you want to change in your life. You want to make better. Or, I, or people will say, I want to quit smoking or drink less. And then pick one thing. Do that one thing for 21 days. And the reason I say 21 days is because it takes 21 days to get a new habit or to break a bad habit. So once you have done that consistently for 21 days, then your mind knows that you are capable of overcoming that. And it's exciting. So then once you've done that, now try to attack another thing on your list. And then do that for 21 days. When you've been able to do that and achieve that, do another thing on the list. So I, to me, it's so great if you can do little things, like little achievements, little wins. I actually, it, it sounds really silly, but you might have heard of the book. I think it was by a marshal. It's uh, a military book, and I'm really into those kind of books. A friend actually recommended it. He was in the Marines, and it was during COVID. It was called Make Your Bed. I can't remember who it's by. Oh, yeah. And I said I to read myself, I'm like, I said, I said to him, I'm like, why do you want me to read this book? I'm like, I know how to make my bed. And he's like, you're missing the point. Yeah. Read the book, Haley, and tell me what you think of it after. It's one of my top favorite books. And the reason is because... It tells you if you make your bed every single day, you come home and you get that sort of satisfaction that it just that I'm able to achieve that task. There's so many other little things in your life and people might laugh at me for saying that, but it's true. They often say that it put it puts a smile on the person's face when they come home to a a clean room, a um, a bed made compared to, you know, crap all over your room, your bed's not made. It's a different sort of mood. And I notice it. I've been making my bed for years and it just, it's a great feeling. I love it. It is. It's a great book, actually. I read it too. And it's, it's uh, it takes time to digest it. Because yeah. once you read the first time, you're like, ah, oh, this is, it but does. then you, you really dig into it and it actually can, can help you to guide your life or fix your life in a way. It doesn't matter what it is. But it, it, it mm -hmm. help you. And it's true. Just That's make your right. bed. It's the one step at a time. Make your bed. That's right. That is, that is actually a great tip for people. Listen to us. Um, and um, it's almost an hour. Wow. Uh, before we, you know, close down the episode, because <laughs> yeah. I really want to do another episode with you because you're really interesting. And hopefully next time uh, I would love can that. In, we can do Aww, it in person. Thank you. Uh, I can break my stuff too. So I would love that. Place. Maybe yeah. when I'm, uh, yeah, and maybe when I'm in town, if that's possible, maybe the day yeah, yeah. I'm there, I'd look like there. But yeah, that'll be, all, that'll be awesome. That'll be awesome. Um, yeah. What, yeah, that'll be great. And uh, what person would you recommend to be in the podcast to talk to me about motivation and, and, and mental health and all that? Entrepreneurship, which you are now. Okay, sure. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I tend to recommend uh, this person. I have actually two people. So I would say my good friend and mentor, David Vandevelop, he is the founder of Kettle One Vodka and Van Gogh Vodka. He is just such an inspiring guy. And he is 83 years old and He keeps working. He doesn't stop. You know, it's just, it's so oh my God, 83. to see these people, oh. you know, towards the end of their life. And he's like, I, I keep doing this. I'm going to meetings. I'm going to be late. And I'm like, God bless you. You're amazing. And the other person is Rita Ullum. I actually love her. She has just such a precious gift, you know, and she used to work in uh, diabetes prevention. 
Okay. She lives in South Florida and she is just the most humble, amazing lady. She's Cuban and, you know, she has that sort of zest and love for life. And if you think I'm very outgoing, she's like to the 10th degree. <laughs> so uh, she's amazing. Just a big heart of gold. And I recommended her to a lot of different shows I've been on. Everyone loves her. Sweet. So, so I will try to uh, see if I can yeah. send a text or something, contact her maybe, and uh, see what happens. Uh, yeah, definitely. I can put you y'all in a, a group chat. Yeah, so. that'll be perfect. I'll, I'll mm -hmm. take it. Yes, I'm in. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. She'll, yeah, no she'll respond back right away. She's amazing. It's awesome. So uh, and well, uh, what is your future projects now before we go? What do you have in mind the next year or six months? What do you have? Sir, sure. So we have a lot of different things in the works. So, um, well, with the books wise for Haley Marguerite Publishing, I can't say the company name of this individual that we're working on their books, but they want to do another six to seven more books. So that's really exciting. We have another repeat client that wants to get another book published. So we have a lot um, more um, clients who want to get their books published. So that's exciting. We um, are looking into markets where my assistant uh, might be going to events with me to uh, promote the books that way. I used to go out in the field and promote the books. So we might have some travel involved. Um, that's in the works. And then we also have some big nonprofits and organizations that we are in discussion of forming a partnership, like some big uh, companies. So I can't release too much yeah, of the yeah. information of which companies, but hopefully the next time we talk, there will be more information out. So nice. it's exciting. Well, good luck. So, I wish you the best. Uh, yeah. Definitely doing another thank episode you. with you. It would be great. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much for being oh, here. Give me your time. Hey, thank you, Heather, for help make this happen. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put all your contact information on the description. <laughs> if you don't mind to say it again, where people can find you. So you can find me at my website by going simply to www. E N T U R E dot com. So which is spelled <laughs> Charlie Takes an Adventure dot com. <laughs> it's a long one there. I, I see oh, that. I can hold that up. Yeah, let me, let me see. So this yeah, is my up, latest book. Heather gave it to me. So this is the latest book, Charlie Takes an Adventure to the Moon. Perfect. That's and easier. This is the one that my uh, mentor, David Van Develle, founder of Kettle One, we actually worked on this together, the design of what the book would look like. So the programs do uh, fall into this one. We have like Salvation Army in here, Rotary, Girl Scouts of America. So nice, that's stuff. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. That's uh, I'm so happy that you're thank that. you. You're, you're the tip of the spear, like the military said, or we said here in the fire service. You're the tip of the spear. Thank Keep you. going, girl. Don't stop. Don't don't let uh, ex boyfriends you. put you down <laughs> or family members. Just keep going. You're doing great. That's right. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. And well, uh, thank, for you those thank you for your time. Thank you for the opportunity. But yeah, if anyone wants to get a copy of my book, or you can just Google online, Haley Marguerite. If you can't remember it, it's Haley, like Haley's Comet, Marguerite, like a margarita you drink. No joke. That's my name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> thank you so much, Marguerite. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> My yeah, pleasure. Have a, have a wonderful you. day, and uh, I will see you in the next episode. May you see you in Orlando or down Miami. Thank you so much, and people, take care. Yes, yes.